Hi, everybody. Hey, yeah, it's Christmas time. Or getting close to Christmas. Christmas is not about what we do, but it's about what God has given. And what we want to say to you today is that what God wants to do for your life is he wants to enrich you. And he wants to enrich you in every way. Uh, Christmas is not just informational, this is what happened, like a history uh, account. But it is about God coming to us and wanting to enrich our lives. Now, if you can stay with this and ask the question, how is that so? Why is that so? Stay with us. Um, but there's more to life than I think any of us could ever imagine, and that's what God wants to unlock in our lives. Not me and my speaking and my understanding, but actually the power of God that will come to you and open up how he wants to enrich you in every way. We have a picture of this man. His name is Christian Bernard. He's a South African. He uh, died, I think, in maybe 2015. That's speculative. But anyway, he is known for doing the first heart transplant, and that first heart transplant happened in December in South Africa. He uh, transplanted from an auto accident victim to a grocer who needed a new heart. Uh, the grocer only lived 14 days, died of pneumonia, and uh, because of the drugs that he was given, that his body would not uh, 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 disregard this new heart coming into him. And there's a lot of been learned with that today. And so many people have received a new heart transplant. It's a new lease on life. It's saying that you're going to be sustained in the sh short period of time that you have been given. It's going to be extended. Well, what God wants to do is something like that. You know, we talk about the heart as a seat of emotions. We know it's something different. But God wants to give us something new through what Jesus Christ has done. And so what we see is a glimpse of what went on 2,000 years ago in this historical account. Well, it's not a historical account as much as it is this letter that uh, Paul wrote to this church in Corinth. Paul being the, one of the apostles, one of the most significant apostles. And that what he's seeing in these people or what he knows about them is that they have been enriched by God's grace. Now we're talking about God's grace. It's about what God has done for them and it changed their lives. So he says, this is at the top of the letter. He starts right away with, I give thanks to my God always because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus. That in... Every way you were enriched in him, in all your speech and in all your knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed in you. So what God wants to do is not to give us some type of instruction guide or, you know, maybe during the Christmas season you, or you get a gift and it says, here's the quick start guide to get going. Hey, Jesus died for your sins and there you go. That's the way to have it. It's, it's more of a, 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 a taking in what God wants to say to you in your life to give you a sense of knowledge that will transform how you live and how you think. And all of this is being called enrichment, okay? You know, I don't know how many people would say, hey, I got the rules here, and boy, do I get enriched by following a bunch of rules to make somebody happy. Maybe that can happen for some people. Uh, people look for the rules on how to get rich, how to have good relationships. But what God is doing is more than that. It is a transformation of the how we live our life. And it comes through this knowledge. Now the word here in verse 5 for knowledge, it means more than, again, just information. It is a knowledge that changes us. At its core, with the grace of God coming to human beings, God declares us righteous. And God says to us, your past, whatever you've done, it's been wiped clean. God says, I want you to understand the grace that I give you, and how deep that goes by understanding what my law is for your life. So it is this love and acceptance that comes through Jesus Christ that changes everything. It is a foundational need of every human being that walks the earth. 
And what God does is he comes to us by the power of his Holy Spirit and shows us what Jesus Christ has done. And this new message, this, this new heart transplant, we might even say, uh, opens up a whole new world for us. Uh, and not that we would be uh, living in paradise every day of our life. We will still get sad. We will still disjoint. It will still be dis frustrated, but we have something in our life that enriches us in every way, and that we begin to see things perhaps that we've never seen before. So it comes in our knowledge. And what God says also is key to this life is not just uh, 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 what he's doing with us, it's how that will flow into relationships. Because the key to life, according to God, is love God and love the people he puts in our life. Those are just the two issues he gives us. Well, what we, he does by taking us and giving us this new knowledge, this transforming knowledge, he frees us that our mouths open up and connect with other people. Well, and with our actions also. So that in all your speech and in all your knowledge, that there becomes a speech that comes from us that blesses, that connects with others. Okay, now. This is a little bit dangerous, but I'm going to throw it out here. What Paul is saying in verse 6 here, even as our testimony about Christ was confirmed in you, he's saying that these people in Corinth, this is in Greece 2,000 years ago, all this stuff, their lives have been changed by the gospel, by the grace of God. And he says that's been confirmed. Why do I say that's dangerous? Can you fake it? I think you can. I think you can try to be a good moral person and discipline yourself in the things that you think about and in your speech. Now, there's also within that a frustration element built in that will lead you in bad places. But yeah, you can try to fake it, but what God wants to do is he doesn't want you to fake it. He's not about making phony balonies who just follow a bunch of rules in life and say, oh, you got to be like this, you got to watch your mouth, you know, you got you to gotta get this knowledge. He, he's about something bigger. And he's about transforming lives. But Paul is saying, I'm seeing faith in action. Okay? Now, if I could say anything to you, <laughs> I mean, right on my mind right now, I'm saying, hey, look, don't settle for a Christianity that's just about being good, having knowledge about what Jesus did, and don't forget, Jesus Christ died for your sins, and that's how you get to heaven. Just kind of informational. Oh, and go, make sure you go to church every week. Don't settle for that stuff. God is out to do big things in your life. Now, I don't want you to get frustrated with that either. Because, you know, to say, well, it's just going to whoosh hit me. That can happen. Uh, and maybe you've already had those experiences in your life. But just to stay with Christ Believing not in some pastor, not in some church, not in some denomination, but believing in Jesus Christ. When we're looking at Christ, I'm telling you, you're looking in the right place. Let God break through in your life right there. Okay, so he's, let's go back to Paul now. He's seeing things going on. He's writing this letter. And now he talks about, this is an Advent message, and Advent means the one who is coming. And Paul is saying that you folks have been enriched and you have been equipped as you wait for Jesus. So life is, you could say, life is about waiting. We're on standby. One of the things is going to happen. We're going to die or the world's going to end. I would say probably we're going to die first, okay? Uh, it hasn't happened in 2,000 years, but the world has a temporal time-boundness to it, as we do too, as that first heart transplant recipient did uh, back in 1967. But what about waiting? That you are not lacking in any gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, if we keep driving in the bus here on 1 Corinthians, we're going to land on spiritual gifts. And that what God does is he gives us these temporary gifts that last only for the time in which we are alive, and once we die, they're all gone, except for the gift of love. And you see this if you keep going into 1 Corinthians 13. I'm talking about 12 now. Um, but you have these gifts. Now, the gifts, you could take those and make them your kind of your pride thing and 
say, I'm a gifted person and I'm elite. I call this the alternative Jesus, you know. Uh, you find something else in your life that's going to prove your self-worth. But what God is doing with gifts is he gives this to us so that we would use these gifts to give away what he wants to do for the world. And what does he want to do to the world? for the world? He wants to love the world through what Jesus has done. And he's inviting us to be a part of this. You see, when you talk about your life and what really matters, what God uh, uh, wants to give us is a sense of meaning. And our meaning will come from having something greater than ourselves that goes back uh, to something greater to accomplish a greater purpose than is of ourselves. And God invites us to be a part of what matters most for the earth. And he gives individual gifts to make this happen. And we're not lacking in any gifts. And the great gift, it's not a spiritual gift, it's an eternal gift, is the love of God in Christ Jesus. It is the gift of what makes you an acceptable person in the, in the eyes of God. And then when God declares you as righteousness, as loved and forgiven, that that will have a power in your life, okay? And again, that, that comes from, you know, we're not just getting into a, what we call an antinomianism, that it comes from the fact that we all have shortcomings, failing to love God, failing to love others, but again and again we see that the grace of God and the depths of his love covers all of our failures, and we walk as being okay. This, this, this releases anxiety in life. It allows us to let go knowing that God is with us. Even though we may unnecessarily get anxious in life, we may even question, am I good enough? Do I do things right? We may even get mad at people who bring up our faults. But th th the fact is that this gift is there. It is there. And we have a time period of this life that we live with this grace and that your life has something to say and your specific gift. You know, well, probably better to push that one down to verse or chapter 12 to talk about that as how God has made you uniquely gifted and how do you put that gift to work. If you seek that gift, that's a good thing. I wouldn't seek the gift before you seek the big gift of Jesus, but let that fall and then you understand who you are in this life and what your life is about and what is your purpose. Okay. We are enriched because God holds on to us. This is a big one for me, okay? Because my mind can go all over and you know maybe get into some uncertainty and then some doubt in my own life. But the bottom line of life is, it's not going to come down to what you do. <laughs> it's going to come down to what God has done for you. It's not going to come down to us holding on to God. It's going to come down to God holding on to us. And that's what he's telling these people in Corinth. Who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, by whom we were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. So you see relationship going on in verse 9. And in verse 8, it's you see, hearing sustain you to the end is to get you to the end point of your life, the end point of the second coming of Christ, and to get you into that place of guiltless. It's not going to be about your fault. It's going to be about what Jesus Christ has given you in your life. Uh, to have comfort that God holds on to you. He holds on to us because of what he's done. To make your life journey to the end with Jesus Christ. That's what he wants us to do. Now, I don't know where you might be with this. okay? But I just want to put this out there. okay? It's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one that will convict you on these issues. Continue to look for God in your life. Search him out. Let him make the difference that he wants to. Don't settle for a Christianity of associations or belonging to a group. Go after what is this enrichment, God? Teach me more. And maybe you do know that. And it has happened in your life. 
So keep on keeping on and coming back to the word, okay? So we're going to go with the prayers now and pray over the text. And uh, there's a few people that have come to us and said that they've been, that they're hurting or have health issues. We'll bring before the, them before God too. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, thank you. Thank you for this letter. Thank you for letting us have a glimpse into what was going on in Corinth. And we know through the rest of the book, there are problems that are going to be brought out. But there is a message of your great love for these people. So Father, uh, we know that what you did 2,000 years ago, you do today, generation to generation. So Father, send us your Holy Spirit that we may believe your Holy Word and live holy lives here in time and there into eternity. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, for those who are hurting in the world, for those in conflict, uh, for the Israelis we think of and the um, Palestinians, the Hamas, uh, Father, we ask for resolution of the conflict, as well as with the Russians and the Ukrainians. Dear Heavenly Father, for those who struggle with health issues, you know, Dina Villavincencio uh, being treated for cancer, Janet uh, Cavalier, uh, who is uh, recovering with her health, and Jack Geish also, watch over them and take care of them. And for all of our online community, our prayer partners, we ask that you would hear the prayers on behalf of others. So, Heavenly Father, into your hands do we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in you. Amen. Okay, the benediction. We have a life to live, a life of waiting, okay? But it's a life that's been enriched in every way. Discover what God has done for you as I hope to continue to discover in my life more and more, because it's greater than any of us know. On your life journey, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor, give you and your life his peace. Amen. Thank you for being here with us. I would encourage you to check out our website, uh, check out our children's corner, check out our uh, For the Curious messages, one minute messages that we have uh, on there. Also, we're running today uh, conversations for the curious. Uh, we have the two Steves that usually help with that, but we also have seen other people coming in and Doug and uh, uh, talking about these texts and what they mean and why do they matter and why they're significant. Uh, so if you're open to that, I would encourage you to find those on our website as well as YouTube you can go to. I hope you come back and see us again. God's peace be with everybody. Take care now.